Uh, you want to round out your delts, so I hit the side lateral raises. Lateral raises got to be in there too. Absolutely brilliant isolation exercise for your shoulders. Please do them, right? Please don't wobble them around the place like you're trying to knock somebody out. Simon the Bordet Hole here, and Athlean X has decreed that these are the only exercises you need to look jacked. Now, somebody sent this video to me over Instagram at Simon316. DMs are open. Please do send it to me. And at first, I was like, ah, oh, that is a very interesting video. But actually, when you get into the meat of bones in it, it sends out a pretty damn good message. So basically what he's done, I've got it written down here, is he has gone through muscles that, you know, make an instant impression, to use his words. And we've got traps, we've got shoulders, we've got chest, we've got arms, we've got midsection, and we've got glutes. And I think the really cool thing about this video is it all comes down to how you're approaching the gym. And I think when you do actually start looking at it this way, it's going to help you massively because most people just want to look good, right? They're not training for super duper strength. They're not playing for super duper cardio. They just want to be able to walk down the road and look in the mirror and go, oh my gosh, I'm so happy with how I look, right? It's why a lot of people don't train legs, especially gym bros, right? Gym bros only train their upper body and their chest and their arms because they want to go out on a Friday night and they want to have a massive chest and they want to have massive arms. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, right? However you want to go through the gym is the way that you want to go to the gym. As long as you're being safe and as long as you aren't getting in anybody else's way, then why the hell can't you do whatever the hell it is you want to do? So with that in mind, we shall go through all of the exercises and see how much worth there is to them. And again, if you are just training for the aesthetic, knowing Athlean X, he probably hit it right on the head. Easy enough. Traps. Traps. How do you develop your traps? All right, well, first off, I love the deadlift. It's my compound lift, obviously, to start with, and it allows me to weight up really heavy. And it really gives me that isometric contraction on my traps. So you start with the deadlift, right? And yes, the deadlift will work your traps. Oh, shock horror. Because again, so many people are like, oh, deadlifts for back or deadlifts for legs. No, the deadlift is a compound exercise, meaning you're going to bring a load of things into, into, well, using them, right? And even if you are doing it for traps, which we have been doing for the purpose of this video, you still work your back, your legs, and everything else is going on, your arms a little bit too. So that makes perfect sense. Next, what would you do if you need to be a little bit more dynamic? Um, to be dynamic, power shrug, absolutely. Because it allows me to lighten the weight up a little bit, but again, it's a more dynamic movement. It allows me to get, you know... So you get a little bit of momentum into it, so it's not just a static contraction. Then we're basically isolating it, and we go on to power shrug. So we've kind of worked lots of muscles with our trap being somewhat of a priority. And now we're moving on to power shrugs, barbell shrugs, dumbbell shrugs, just shrugs, whatever you want to do. And remember, when you are doing shrugs, do them properly. Don't ego lift when you just, you know, load up the bar like crazy and kind of, I don't know, look like you're some kind of jackhammer. You ain't no jackhammer. And then the last one is actually one I introduced you to. Oh, I love this one. It's the trap pull down. So guys, if you haven't tried this, you go to a pull down machine, you take a narrow grip, lean forward and pull straight down and back. You really feel an intense contraction on the traps. Now, admittedly, I've tried to do the trap pull down. It's really hard. It's really hard. So start low with your weight, right? It's not like a barbell shrug when you have to do 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 plus kilos. No. Start with a relatively small weight and then work your way up from there because it's more about form. And what most people do is they just load up their deltoids because their elbows are all over the place. So watch videos like this that Athlete X has done. Go watch a bunch of other people. And again, it's a nice thing to do in order to try and focus in on your traps, but it doesn't mean that it's easy. All right, so we keep it going down the line here. Next stop is at the shoulders. Shoulders. How are you developing yours? Uh, obviously, again, starting with the compound lift and that's a heavy overhead press. Moving on to shoulders. And again, we start with the compound lift. They just said that, the overhead press. Do you see how simple some of these things can be, right? They just can. You don't have to go in there and kind of isolate every single, you know, shoulder, deltoid head or whatever the hell you want to do. You should do that and you can do that. But if you're an aesthetic kind of a guy, just make sure you're doing the overhead press and make sure you're doing progressive overload. So as always, let's say you're going to do it today and you do 10 kilograms. Next week, try and do 12.5. The week after that, maybe 12.75. Or maybe you stick with 12.5 and instead of doing eight reps, you do 10 reps, et cetera, et cetera. Just always find ways to add little bits to your exercises. We go from the overhead press, the obvious one, yep. to, I would say, another obvious one here too. Uh, you want to round out your delts, so I hit the side lateral raises. Lateral raises got to be in there too. Absolutely brilliant isolation exercise for your shoulders. Please do them, right? Please don't wobble them around the place like you're trying to knock somebody out. Like, they have to be a controlled movement. And also, because time under tension is important, no, you're not going to be able to go as heavy as you would do on some other exercises because your hand is up here. And when it's up here, like there's a lot of movement and gravity is fighting you. So yeah, take off some of the kilograms or take off some of the pounds and make sure you're going up and make sure you're coming down and make sure you're focusing on that deltoid. What too many people do is they do go too heavy and their trap starts to come into gear and we've already done traps. The, the next one, the face pull. So if you want to round out delt development, we're going to get the rear delts too. And for example, with face pulls, again, something that you see a lot of people doing. And maybe, I don't want to say that people are doing it wrong, because as long as you've got a good muscle connection, you know, you can do it whatever you want. But I would always suggest watch videos like this. Again, go light with the weight and... 
I mean, I mean, I don't know whether how much you just saw, but basically just do it how Jesse from Athlete Nexus videos are doing it. I mean, some people like to do it with the bar, etc., etc. I think that's the best way to do it, and I think that's the best way to hit the shoulders, especially your rear delt in the way that you probably never do, because the rear delt is like an orphaned boy. Nobody cares. All right, now let's keep it going. So the yeah. next stop is the arms. So we want to fill those shirt sleeves. Right. So what are you doing here for your arms? Uh, first, let's start with curls. Okay, so I actually like the alternating dumbbell curl because you can focus one arm at a time here. Yeah. See, again, I keep going on about this, but it's so simple. He talks about arms. Arms comes in at number four, and we're doing dumbbell curls or we're doing barbell curls. Don't do it in a squat rack because I will find you and I will absolutely whoop your ass. But there ain't no magic here. There's not some weird exercise where you're laying down on a bench and kind of rotating your arms 62 degrees because that's how you hit one of the heads on your biceps. No, the reason the bicep curl is so well known is because it's the one that works. You can't get better than it, essentially. Like if you want pizza, you don't go and eat non-cheese on toast. You just have cheese on toast. The waiter's curl. Okay, so the waiter's curl, again, something that I actually usually take credit for as yes. the exercise that gives me that biceps peak. So that one actually is a little bit more out of left field, the waiter's curl. I've tried to do the waiter's curl before, and my form sucks, to be completely honest with you. And somehow, every time I do it, I, I engage my chest. I know. Simon, what the hell is wrong with you? I don't know. Having a conversation with myself here. But it goes to show, it's not always an exact science. Would I personally do it? No, but it ties back into the whole thing about building your aesthetic muscles, right? Which mostly is in this region. I know we're going to talk about glutes, but I mean, some people do want a bigger ass, but it's mostly sort of <laughs> the top heavy stuff. As long as you know that's what you're training for, you don't have to be ashamed. Wear your aesthetic sunglasses with pride. Uh, next up is line dumbbell tricep extensions. Okay, and what are you looking for here? So it hits the long head of the triceps, which is great because it makes up the most meat of the triceps, and obviously your triceps makes up two thirds of your arm. And we got the line dumbbell tricep extension. I love any kind of extension. Also, you know, it's kind of similar to the skull crusher too. Remember, if you are going to do skull crushes, you don't take. I know this is your skull, but this is also your skull. Go for the bald patch. Where you would go bald, that's where you want to aim for, kind of. But it's a great exercise, and the cool thing about it too is you can move the bench to kind of hit it at different angles. So you can do it on a line bench you can do it on a 45 degree bench some people kind of like to have their head slightly off the top because that hits it in a different way it is a terrific exercise and don't forget as well you know really basic stuff but you may not know tricep has three heads bicep has two heads right by tri so you want to make sure you're kind of doing a little bit more work on your tricep because it's a bigger muscle part in the same way that you'd work your back more than you would your arms again we move now a little bit inward the chest. Uh, bench press, obviously. Again, compound movements, guys. That's It's my favorite one to start with. And probably everybody's favorite. Maybe arm is favorite, but we move on to the chest. And of course, you want to bench press. Now, do you have to bench press? I know some people don't like doing it because it hurts their elbows or it hurts their shoulders. Of course you don't. But what I would say to those people is you can still do progressive overload and not go crazy heavy. So if you're doing, say, 100 kilograms and it's just making your joints ache, do 50 kilogram bench presses. Maybe you want to do it at the end of your workout as more of a finisher than something you do at the start unless you want to pre-exhaust your muscles. But you can work, let's say you cannot do more than 50 kilograms, right? Because you're injury prone mess, which is fine. I get it. I'm an injury prone mess too. Just muck around with those rep ranges. I mean, you could even go all the way up to 20 reps and then maybe, you know, shake it around a little bit. There is not a one stop shop to any of this is my point. Always be adaptable and always be ready to change it up when you need to. So what's the next exercise? Uh, low to high crossover. All right, so with the low to high movement here, again, you guys know that I love the adduction-based movements for chest. If you go from low to high, you're following the fiber direction of the upper chest a little bit more. Low to high crossovers are great as well. When you get to the cables, mostly people kind of do it from the side or from, from up above. I like doing it coming from the bottom because I kind of feel like you hit your incline or your upper chest, I should say. It's, it's a good incline exercise, even though it doesn't look like it. And look, some people say, I understand why, because you're pulling it like that. I would argue your form's a little bit off, but they also feel it a little bit of their bicep. So, you know, if you're working chest and because you're obsessed with your biceps, you want a sneaky bicep workout, exercise for you. Uh, finally, the dips. You know, very easy movement, but, you know, it definitely hammers the chest. Do you hard. like to weight them? And dips are the last one. My word, do I love a weighted dip. Like, you want to make sure you're leaning a little bit forward in order to try and hit that chest. But again, work with your own body. Everyone's going to be different. But so many people don't bother with a dip anymore, and I don't know why, especially a weighted one. You don't have to start with a weighted one. Start with your own body part. But when you're getting up to sort of that 15, maybe even 20 rep range, yeah, tie a weight around your ass and see how you go. Again, I think he's got a 45. You don't have to do a 20 kilogram, 45 pound plate. Put a five kilogram plate on. People go, oh, it's only five kilograms. But it's still five kilograms more. Do you not understand how maths works? I cannot stand that. I cannot stand it. That's not a very big weight. Well, you know what? You don't have a very big brain. Yeah. So what are your favorite exercises to do 
to develop your midsection? Uh, I start with the dumbbell power up. That's one of my absolute favorite ab movements of all time. Now, of course, when we do get to the midsection, abs, six pack, whatever you want to call it, you got to have your diet on point first, right? Why you can walk around and look big in a jumper if you do have some muscular development. If you want to show off your abs, you're going to have to be at a certain body fat percentage. So this one, I'm not going to say that it's, uh, it's disingenuous. It's not that at all. He's just telling you exercises that will help shape your core. And some people can get to 15% body fat and have abs. Some people need to get to 12. Some people need to get to sub 10, which is going to be really hard. Unfortunately, that's just genetics and the way it works for you. But what I like about the dumbbell power up is that it's kind of like a good overall core exercise too. Like it requires a lot of effort and it is going to kick your ass. And never forget, most exercises that are kicking your ass, e.g. the flipping walking lunge, probably means it's good for you. And that's why you don't like doing it because it's hard. So I love the hanging exercises, guys. They're more difficult because you have to lift the weight of your legs. Make sure you're doing them properly by curling your butt under and not just lifting your legs up. Hanging leg raises absolutely suck too. I mean, they are great for your lower abs, which is an area that actually some people lack when they do try and focus their abs. They kind of go more for the core of the core as opposed to the lower ones. And also the lower ones are usually the last ones to you'll see because obviously that's where most people have a little bit of a paunch or that's sometimes the last place the fat gets rid of. But they are so hard. Like they absolutely suck and some people do it with a dumbbell in between their feet I am not ashamed to tell you I've never done it with a dumbbell in between my feet and I probably never will do and you want to know why? I don't want to. The last exercise here is one that I actually introduced you to. It's the gymnast ab tuck I mean, I can't tell you anything about the gymnast ab tuck twist. I've never done it That may be the first time I ever see it and yeah, I'm not gonna spend any any time on that because I don't care. Glutes! This what you, is my wheelhouse. What, do you, what are you doing here? Squats, squats, squats. It's my favorite exercise. All right, so in building up to a pretty impressive squat. Yeah. I like the fact they put squats in there because, of course, not many people train their quads or their hamstring, their calves for aesthetic purposes, right, to look good because usually you're in a pair of trousers unless you're walking around in tight shorts, good for you. But the cool thing about squats is they are a great glute builder, right? They will build your ass. So many times people have said, Miller, what's the best way for me to build my bum? Do squats. And that's one of the reasons I have a shelf ass because I've been doing squats for ages. And I guess, you know, certain muscle, certain muscle groups on certain people are going to develop easier. That's just how we're built. And sadly or goodly or whichever word you want to use, my ass is one of them to the point you could probably rest a can on it should you not have a table, which would be weird. We have talked about this before. But I've never really done any other exercises for them other than squats. I do do hip thrusts nowadays, which just goes to show. Probably the best compound builder there is, is squats. It's basically going to hit everything. Moving around to the next exercise is... Uh, barbell hip thrust. And then we talk about the barbell hip thrust. Again, there was a time when I was like, I don't want to do that. It looks stupid. But actually, when you do get into it, and when you have the form down, form is really hard with the barbell hip thrust. It is absolutely terrific, especially if you are lacking in bottom half development, which is a terrible, terrible use of words. But it's just really, really good. I would add it in. Do it at the end of your leg session if you can't find any other time. Just do three sets, lightweight, and yeah, basically push your groin towards the roof. Well, cool. And then the last exercise is one of my favorites, and it's one of the bodyweight ones. Not everybody has access to the machine, but it's the glute ham raise. And then we finish with the glute ham raise. Again, a difficult one to get right because you're doing it on a hyperextension machine and some people, well, they focus more on their lower backs. It's all about moving that padding and getting your feet right. So just keep doing it until once again, you get that mind muscle connection, right? You don't need to be holding any weights or anything like that at first. And if you do a couple and you realize your lower back is kicking into gear, stop it and just shuffle around, watch videos. And again, a lot of the gym and a lot of getting these things right is just trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, which is a little bit boring, but I ain't gonna lie to you, that's how it's done. Video also finishes off. I don't wanna do Jeff a disservice by saying you don't just wanna look the part, you wanna be healthy and you wanna be you know, training in the right way so everything is ticking over. But I appreciate the transparency. I really, really do. There are a bunch of people who are training to look great. And that's it. I mean, if you actually take everything else into account as well, like I say, the health, the stability, your joints, pain, et cetera, et cetera, it's going to help because of course it is, especially long term down the line. But if you are just trying to look like some kind of statue, if you incorporate all those things into your routine and you're eating well and you're pushing hard, intensity, progressive overload, you are going to look better than you do right now. You may not look exactly like you want, and let's be honest, you never will because the dangling carrot, you never actually get there. But it's all about the journey and it's all about evolving. So if January 2021, you look worse than you do in the summer of 2021 because you've got better. This is good news. All of that's going to do it. That's why I like this video. I really, really, I'm a massive fan, as you probably know, a huge advocate of just honesty when it comes to the gym. So if you are someone who doesn't give a flow about any of that and you just want to look jacked, 
Good for you. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Hit the bell, ding, ding. So you know other videos are going live. There is another video on the screen. Please do give it a click. Write whatever you want in the comments. Just write something. YouTube loves it. It helps the algorithm. Also, if you're looking for supplements, grillamind.com forward slash Simon. Use code Simon. Get 10% off. I cannot rate their pre-workout enough, especially their non-stimulated pre-workout. If you're not into caffeine, it is fantastic. Same thing as we move into the new, di- new year, I should say, with Greg Doucette's Power 13 Cookbook. Link in the description. Use code Simon15. Get 15% off. It's just a bunch of healthy recipes trying to allow you to enjoy your diet so you don't want to cheat on it because you're eating healthy kind of cheap foods you can check it out at instagram simon316 twitter simon316 as well dms are open chuck me something patreon.com forward slash simon316 if you want to support me that way i have merch simonmiller.bigcartel.com once i've sold through all of this i'm going to rethink my merch so i'll be pimping that again probably some point in the new year but we still have a few shirts left otherwise i'm on cameo if you'd like a shout out take care of yourself have a lovely day and i'll speak to you soon